What is up, you guys? Welcome to another edition of Controversial Thoughts. I am your host, Carnivore MD, Paul Saladino. And one of the fun things about this mini monologue podcast that I publish on Fridays is that I get to tell stories. I can tell stories about research that I find interesting, or I can tell stories about my life and my experiences, which is what I'll be talking about today, specifically the story of why I am currently living in Costa Rica. I know many of you have asked this question. I've talked about it a little bit on live uh, question and answers on Instagram. And you know, you're asking, what, are you running from the feds? Is there a vegan mob or mafia against you? No, none of those things. I'm not in trouble with the law in the United States. There's no vegan mafia against me. In fact, I don't really think there's even a vegan mafia out there because their bones wouldn't be very strong and they'd be pretty weak and sarcopenic. They wouldn't be very intimidating anyway. But I am living in Costa Rica now because this is a place that really grabbed me when I came here. The story is that I came in February. There was a large storm in Austin, a big winter storm. I was on my way back from Africa. As many of you know, I spent uh, a couple of weeks in Tanzania with the Hadza, some of the last remaining hunter-gatherers on the planet in Lake Iasi. I got to hunt with them. I got to live with them. I got to eat with them and talk to them. It was amazing. I've done multiple podcasts on my experiences with the Hadza if you're interested. But on my way back, I stopped in DC to see my family and this huge winter storm hit Austin. As chance would have it, I thought, I'm not gonna go back to Austin right now in the midst of a water shortage and electricity issues. I'm just gonna go somewhere warm for a little bit and get in some surfing. I love being in the ocean. And so I came here to Santa Teresa, Costa Rica. It's a place I'd heard about it many times. And my friends had always said with glowing eyes, you need to go there if you want to learn to surf or if you want to get better at surfing. I started surfing when I was in residency at the University of Washington in Washington State in Seattle. So most of the surfing I've done has been in frigid cold water. The idea of 85 degree water was very appealing to me. So I came here to Santa Teresa with the intention of staying here for about eight days. Eight days quickly turned into two weeks, which quickly turned into a month and then two months and now over three months that I've been here in Costa Rica. And the reason that I feel so drawn to this place is that I quickly discovered that in addition to having warm water and sun, it's also a much slower pace of life. It's a simpler pace of life. For most of the time that I've been here, the main road in town was dirt. All the side roads are dirt. And it's given me an opportunity to practice my Spanish and reconnect with people that live here and just really slow down. I spend most of my days out here outside. There's really no concept of being indoors in Costa Rica. The place that I'm staying now is open air. I'm actually, I've decided to buy a house here in Santa Teresa and it's a completely open air house. And so this, I realized this place in Costa Rica for me has become a space where I can live out what I believe in as the remembering very easily. And that quickly appealed to me. That, I thought, that's amazing. I want to stay here for the time being and live closer to what I believe a human is supposed to live like. That's what the remembering is all about. You guys may have heard me mention this term or seen me use the hashtag on Instagram. It's a phrase that I coined maybe last year at some point after I had dinner with a good friend of mine, Tucker Max. And we were talking about how in the vegan space, there is this meme is framing that being a vegan is somehow empathetic or kind. It's not actually the case. And in fact, if you've had dealings with many vegans, anecdotally and experientially, in my case, and many others, you know that they're not always the kindest people, probably because they're nutrient deficient. They can be quite cranky and irritating and very insulting and demeaning. So there's not a whole lot empathetic about being a vegan, um, but the idea that it represents compassion or harms less animals, which it doesn't actually either, is why people are attracted to it. There's a rallying cry in veganism, which is we are kind humans, as then they completely insult someone on the internet, call them names. I've been called so many names by vegans, it's insane. They yell at people in the street, they're vandalizing things for people, uh, of people who they believe are harming animals. And they're not really fully informed about the fact that eating monocrop plants and processed factory farmed uh, Beyond Burgers and Impossible Burgers harms many life forms and completely disrupts ecosystems. And so 
there's a great meme hashtag on Instagram I've seen saying carnivore is vegan. In fact, which is amazing. If you really wanted to be compassionate and you really wanted to do the least harm to the environment and the ecosystem, eating more animals, especially well-raised animals, grass-fed, grass-finished animals from regenerative farms is definitely the way to do it. And that's why I'm a huge fan of regenerative agriculture, something I talked about in a recent podcast with Robbie Sansom, something that we are huge supporters of at Heart and Soil. All of our desiccated organ supplements are from regenerative farms in New Zealand, and we're hoping to develop a US-based supply chain as well. So in the vegan movement, there is this meme, this idea that it's compassion, that it's kindness, that it's empathy. It's not really, but that's what attracts people to it. So in this conversation with Tucker, I realized, you know what? People are looking for more than dietary information. As humans, we're all kind of hungry for understanding how we should live our lives. And so the remembering is, is my best effort to communicate that an animal-based diet is just the first step. It's just the beginning of remembering where we've come from as humans. And that's in fact, I think what we're all after, but it's much bigger than just food. If you guys are new to an animal-based diet, you'll know, or you may have heard me talk about the fact that it's well-raised meat, especially organs, either fresh or desiccated, like we make at Heart and Soil. Our website is heartandsoil.co if you wanna check us out. We just got a new one, go check it out. Let me know what you think, a new website that is. And, the least toxic plant foods. You can always email us, radicalhealth at hardensoil.co.co. If you want the infographic I've talked about a lot that helps you understand which are the least toxic plant foods. That's kind of the way the Hadza eat. That's why I went to Africa to spend time with the Hadza. I wanted to see how they lived, how living hunter-gatherers actually spent their day-to-day, -day, what they ate. They prioritize meat. They always eat the organs. And when they can, they'll eat fruit and honey. They eat leaves and stems pretty rarely. Occasionally they'll eat tubers. It's not a big part of their diet, but, and it's not, doesn't have a lot of nutrients because you may have heard me talk about the fact they spit out the fiber. Not that fiber is really a nutrient for humans in general, but it's mostly just a source of a few starchy carbohydrates, maybe a few minerals, but not much. We definitely ate tubers with the Hadza. I did it, there's a video on my Instagram, but mostly they're focused on animal meat, animal organs, animal fat, and then fruit when it's in season and honey. That's the basis of an animal-based diet, but it goes much bigger than this. And that's what I saw with the Hadza. And that's what I've also been able to recreate here in Costa Rica. It's how we live as humans. It's everything we do. If you guys are watching this video on YouTube, you'll know that I'm ridiculously tan right now because I get to go out in the sun every morning. I surf every day in Costa Rica. I get into the ocean. I spend time in nature, which is quiet, away from cell signals, away from text messages or Instagram that is trying to steal my attention. And then I walk out of the ocean and I walk into a jungle and I walk on a dirt path back to the place I'm staying, which is also in the jungle. There's jungle here, there's sunlight, there's ocean, there's a simple pace of life and there's good food. So this is what happened when I came here. I realized, hey, I always talk about the remembering and this is a wonderful place to try and live it, to live it in a bigger way for me. So I spend as much time in the sun as I can. In fact, I'm gonna get LASIK surgery because I want these contacts out of my eyes so that I can get the wavelengths of light into my eyes, into my retina, into my cornea. I want real light coming into my eyes. I don't want contacts taking it away from that. I'm gonna do a podcast in the future. There's one coming up in the next few weeks with Andy Mant on light and the importance of getting real full spectrum light into your eyes, but also getting it on your skin. I'm gonna tweet about this today so you guys will see it, but isn't it possible that seed oils are actually driving the epidemic of skin cancer rather than sun exposure? I would say yes, because we've been in the sun forever. And some of you may say, ah, yes, but not all of us have dark skin. Well, all of us will have darkening skin if we spend reasonable amounts of time in the sun. I'm a really great example. My skin has way more melanin in it now than it did three months ago. So you will adjust. We are all built to adjust to increasing amounts of sun if we're in the sun. But sun is a huge part of the remembering, being in nature, walking barefoot. I rarely wear shoes in Costa Rica. I'm barefoot right now. And I'm recording this video in a room that's quote unquote indoors so that I can get good quality audio or the best quality that I can hear for you guys. But 99% of my day is spent outdoors in the open air, looking at the ocean, swimming in the ocean, breathing ocean air, breathing the jungle air and walking on dirt. You guys have seen videos on my Instagram of me jumping off waterfalls. A lot of people commented because the water was kind of brown and murky from the rain. I did not get sick. It was totally fine. <laughs> This is what we do. We're meant to be dirty. We're meant to be in the dirt. We're meant to be in the sand. We're meant to be in the ocean. We're meant to be in lakes and rivers. 
we're meant to play. And this is the place that for me has spoken to me in the greatest way and allowed me to live my version of the remembering. Some of you have commented on Instagram that I seem happier and I wouldn't doubt that that's the case. It's an amazing place. Um, and it's been a real blessing for me to be able to be here to live out something that I think is super important, which is understanding who we are as humans, how we eat, but also how we live. This is what the remembering is all about. We've forgotten where we've come from as humans. When we are told to avoid the sun and slather with sunscreen all the time, we have forgotten who we are as humans. When we are fear-mongered into getting a vaccine that some of us don't want or need. Now, there's a whole video I've done on the vaccine if you want my opinions. I'm not entirely against it. It's very controversial. There are some people that may benefit. Listen to that video. This is not a video about the vaccine. But when we're fear-mongered into that state, or we're fear we're pressed into that state with fear media or fear messaging, we've forgotten where we've come from. We've forgotten that as humans, we're meant to have robust immune systems when we live well, when we're actually in the sun, breathing fresh air, when we have adequate vitamin D from ultraviolet light being outdoors, not a pill. And yet, what do we know now about COVID outcomes, obesity, metabolic dysfunction, lack of vitamin D, these all predispose to massively worsening outcomes. Imagine that. We have forgotten who we are as humans. We've forgotten where we've come from. And it makes us so scared and so feeble and so fragile and so unwilling to take risks or have adventures or explore. We've become a completely overly civilized to death, to quote Chris Ryan. I did a whole podcast with him a few weeks ago. You can find it on my podcast, amazing show. We've become civilized to death. The remembering is about becoming uncivilized to life and really getting back to all these things that make us who we are as humans that we have lost. Now, rest assured that amidst all of this surfing and being in the sun, I have a continued commitment and I am more on fire than ever to producing good content, clear ideas that are well discussed and well articulated, they're eloquent and well thought out, making my podcast, continuing to develop new products at Heart and Soil and make the messaging around organs more clear so that we will help more people. So being the best version of yourself allows us all to do the best work. And for me, I can be the best version of myself right now in Costa Rica. You heard this on the podcast earlier this week with Tim Grover. There's nothing wrong with being selfish. Ultimately, you are the conduit for whatever creative energy is flowing through you, whether that's actual art, whether that's taking care of your family, whether that's working in your job. If you are healthier, you will do all those things better. You can be a better conduit. So for me, I can be a better conduit for information that I hope will benefit all of you and bring more people to radical health, as we say at Heart and Soil here in Costa Rica. That's what the remembering is all about. Being the best version of yourself. It's okay to take time for yourself and do things that you enjoy because that allows you to really be on fire for those other creative projects. And that's the balance I find here. I surf and then I come back and I eat a steak and some liver and some desiccated organ supplements from Heart and Soil. And I can't wait to get into writing or researching or making videos like this that I'm so excited to share content with you guys about. And in fact, I think it's so cool here in Santa Teresa that this is an exciting announcement. I want to start doing animal-based gatherings here. You guys heard me talk about this on my Instagram live the other day. I want to do this. Stay tuned. We're going to have a landing page. I'm going to talk about it. You can always email us, radicalhealth at heartandsoil.co if you want more information. But I think in July of 2021, meaning in a month and a half, I want to do an animal-based gathering here in Santa Teresa, which means you're all invited. Everyone is invited. It's not going to cost anything. I just want to gather people who are like-minded so that we can all surf and throw frisbees on the beach and play volleyball and jump in the ocean and see sunsets and look at the stars and walk on the beach and be in the jungle and jump off waterfalls and eat meat and thrive together and build a community here or build a community that comes here and then goes out into the world. So this is the way that I'm announcing this. There's an animal-based gathering coming in Santa Teresa in July. It's free. The only thing you'll have to pay for is your flight here, your food while you're here and the hotel, but I'm not gonna charge anything for the gathering because it's really gonna be pretty low key. We're just gonna meet as a group, share ideas, be in community with each other, support each other, share meals, surf, and do whatever you guys wanna do here. It's gonna be three or four days and I think it's gonna be amazing. I don't wanna charge people for a conference and speaker. People don't wanna be inside anyway. All we wanna be doing in the first place is running around the jungle, exploring and jumping off waterfalls and surfing in the ocean. That doesn't cost anything. 
I'll figure it out with a hotel. We'll find one hotel here where everybody can stay in community and we'll spend a lot of time watching sunsets, sunrises, bonfires, and having an awesome radical time. So stay tuned for the animal-based gathering in Santa Teresa. These are gonna become a regular thing. Look at your calendar, block off some time in mid-July, dates coming, come to Santa Teresa, hang out with me and a bunch of amazing folks because I wanna share this version of the remembering with all of you. So that is why I'm in Costa Rica. That is why I believe in the remembering. Hopefully that helps. If you need anything, you can always email us, Heart and Soil, Radical Health at heartandsoil.co. Like I said, got a new website, go check it out. Let us know what you think, heartandsoil.co. We make grass-fed, grass-finished, regeneratively raised, desiccated organ supplements to help you get the most nutrient-rich foods on the planet into your diet. And we're opening up Canada shipping again, I believe tomorrow or today. So lots of exciting news on the organ front. I believe in organs deeply. I think they change lives. This is what we see all the time with testimonials and people who leave reviews about our supplements. Listen to this, guys. Here's a review from Blake. He says, I absolutely swear by your supplements. I gave myself ample time, three months exactly, to give an honest review of hardened soil supplements to see how I really responded to the changes I've made, both in lifestyle and dietary. What I've found, what I've found is that I haven't been able to find anything that made me feel the way Lifeblood and the rest of the Heart and Soil products did. I don't put this lightly ever, and, but this was something that gave me the most almost instantaneous boost in the way I went about my day. My job is very physical. This regimen helped me feel superhuman right off the bat. I had crazy mental clarity, energy, and it seems to me, uh, and it, and it all seemed to last far into the afternoon, even when I'm taking them at 5.30 a.m. Being someone very connected with my Native American ancestral bloodline, as well as a majority-based uh, meat eater, Dr. Paul and his company were exactly what I've been searching for and what I've been looking to connect with. Thank you to the Heart and Soil Tribe for the changes you've helped me find, and I'll continue to support and speak the praises of the work you guys do. That's amazing. Uh, that's the kind of stuff that makes me Excited to keep doing this work. Lifeblood is an amazing supplement. Check it out at our website, heartandsoil.co. Stay tuned for updates about the animal-based gathering in July. Love you all. Thanks for listening this week on Controversial Thoughts and letting me share some of my story.